Hi guys, um, <clears throat> it's uh, back to do another video. Um, pretty hectic last week and I didn't have a huge deal of time uh, to get a lot of the things done that I wanted to get done and I um, didn't make a video. But I'm back, I'm going to try and keep this pretty short. Um, I want to try and keep my videos around 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so um, I've picked up a few things. Um, firstly, I've been trying to catch up with my book. I've been doing obviously uh, with Record Store Day on the go. Um, I, I suddenly came across a lot of albums. Um, I, I did the Derham Days one and that. I think you see that. I can't remember about these ones. It's Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and yes. Um, and we have uh, another Yes album and the Triamphorat one, which I didn't like, which is the first thing I've been kind of disappointed drawing in here. Um, there's my HMS Donovan and the July one. I'm really pleased with how that one's coming up. Um, I'm really pleased with the July one. I actually spent the whole of the Grateful Dead album and the July album drawing that one. So, uh, Idle Race. Um, and Flaming Lips, uh, The Grateful Dead, and the uh, Sebastian Tellier one, which by the time I got round to drawing that, I was that tired. It, it's kind of crap. Um, but, um, yeah, that's as far as I've got with that, really. I've still got a couple more things to get in there. Um, but, it's going. Okay. Right, first things. Um, Picked this up off eBay uh, for three pounds um, plus three quid postage. So six quid, I think this cost me. Um, this was the first Incredible String Band album, um, and it's brilliant. It's actually one of my favourite of their albums. It's pretty more straightforward folk, um, and this it's not a, a first press, um, but it is on the orange. I think original ones were on. Like a white, white label with a green, greeny, but they go for an awful lot. This one normally goes for an awful lot, but it said it was in fair condition, and it probably is, to be fair. Um, but it's playable. Um, there are pops and ticks and things throughout it, but um, it was three quid, so I jumped on it. Um, so I'm really pleased to have that. Um, and it will certainly keep me listening until I get a much nicer copy. Um, but the first present, no, well, not that's not first present. Um, what else did I get? Uh, oh, um, I picked up the new um, Damon Albarn album called Everyday Robots. This is really good. Um, if you like Damon Albarn stuff, any of his work, this is kind of like. Well, it's what you'd imagine. It's his usual kind of melancholy self. Um, it's a bit like, when I listened to it, it reminded me of the Fall, the Gorillaz Fall album that he did for Record Store Day uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but it's, it's fantastic. It's got some great backing vocals and things on it as well. Um, and it kind of goes all a bit OK computer on the inside. Uh, I don't know whether that's deliberate, but that's what it kind of re reminded me of. And this came with a CD and a download code. Um, double vinyl on a parlophone. So that's definitely definitely how to do them. Um, and I couldn't quite believe it when I found this, but I found it. Dead Sea Fruit. Now, when I saw this, I knew it had to be either something really good or something really bad. It's on the camp, the camp label, and there's five rather dapper looking gentlemen. I thought this is either going to be some really good psychedelic masterpiece or it's going to be some dodgy um, barbershop, well not quartet, quintet style, fisherman's friends uh, kind of thing. Um, but it's actually a very rare um, 
kind of psyche, sunshiny pop album from 67, I think this came out. <coughs> um, and it is amazing. Um, I don't know where it came from. It was just in one of the charity shops. Um, and was with... I picked up a few other things at the same time. There's like an Edith Piaf album and some classical things. But nothing... I don't know whether somebody had beat me to a stash of good stuff and had missed this one, or whether it got jumbled up with... I don't, I don't know. But there it was. So, 20p. Um, Dead Sea Fruit. And this is great. Some of the tracks on this... Um, Seeds of Discontent is fantastic. Um, it's kind of... Uh, some of it has that bonzo dog doodah band kind of i'm gonna sing show tune no, not show tunes but you know um musical tune kind of style to it um but it's really good it's it's uh i'm not gonna say it's beatles like but some of this could have been outtakes from uh something like revolver um Mr. Coffee Pot, especially, I think, could have been a, you know, those kind of backwards guitars and sitars and things on it. Um, and this was on a label I've never heard of before as well, which is the Camp label, which was uh, a Polydor, Polydor label. Um, and then you can see there that the, I'll take it like this. Um, Catalogue number to show up, you can see there it's uh, 603001. So that's um, the Polydor. I mean, it actually says um, it's got Polydor, oh yeah, Polydor Records Limited at the top there. Um, but the catalogue number 603001, I don't know, I know the Polydor, like the track stuff is all 61. 612 for mono and 613 if it's stereo I think um, so I'd be interested if anybody knows of any other stuff that's in that kind of 600 series um, of Polydor I know I think I had a look into it in some of the singles as well some of the track singles were 6 maybe 607 or something maybe I can't remember um, but I was looking into it so if anybody knows any information about the other, any other weird kind of Polydor imprints, um, I'd be quite interested to see that. The uh, I think the Vertigo stuff looked like it would, but it was it's got an extra digit in there. It's like seven digits. There seems to be an extra zero in the middle, but whether that's uh, instead of a space or what, I don't know. Um, yeah, so this uh, Dead Sea Fruit, fantastic kind of Kinks, Bonzo Dog Band, amazing. Uh, psych rarity. Like I said, I'd never even heard of this album, um, and I don't know how many lists of that kind of era's music I had looked through, but it's been a lot. Um, and finally, uh, two other things that I've picked up. I picked these up a while ago, actually, um, but I've never got around to showing them. Um, I have two albums here. Um, this one. Uh, called Louis by uh, Louis Verbo, I presume that's pronounced. Now these are on this, um, they come from Vital, um, Vacuum Tube Logic of America Incorporated. Now these are completely analogue recordings. Um, I think a guy set up a studio and they're kind of jazz, jazz albums. Um, audio file, and these are these sound really good. Um, there's this one I've got called Louis, and um, this one by Todd Cochran. Um, what's the label on it? This one's actually a double. Um, double LP. Um, and these are really rare as well. I think these were limited to about five, five hundred copies. Um, but these sound amazing. 
Um, he's Todd Cochran's kind of jazz pianist, um, and these were recorded directly to um, twin analog tapes, I think, two track tapes, and you know, then pressed directly to vinyl. There was no no overdubbing, you know, no remixing. This is exact. What you hear on this is exactly what happened in the studio. I don't know how many there are in this series. Um, but this is obviously the first one. Catalog numbers vital, uh, vital 001, and this one is uh, vital 007. Um, had a look on eBay, but I couldn't find any information on these selling in the past. Um, but I never checked out like the US eBay, so there's maybe something on there. But um, yeah, so that's it. Well, that's 11 minutes. So that's already a bit longer than I expected. Um, so yeah, um, love to hear your comments. Uh, glad everyone had a good record store day or a good record store avoidance day. Um, and uh, yeah, take, oh, and Fred, I finally got your package posted this morning. <laughs> so hopefully that will be with you at some time within the next month or however long it's going to take to get here. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, 11 and a half minutes. Um, take care and I'll talk to you all soon.